Hello and welcome to Dynamo Dynamo tutorial, how to create basic online template. The goal of this tutorial is that after 15 minutes of this video, you'll be able to create a basic online template of your own with Dynamo Dynamo. In this tutorial, we'll use a job file example and recreate it inside Dynamo Template Builder. The example doc file can be found from the description box of this video. And in case you're looking for some certain instructions, here's the content that we cover in this video with a specific time frame. Okay, let's start. To start, let's navigate to the Dynamo Template Builder. Inside Salesforce, and this is Dynamo Dynamo app, you'll find Dynamo Dynamo object. You are now directed to the Dynamo Template Builder page, so click Template Builder. Then choose to log in either to your production or sandbox with your Salesforce account. And when you're in, go to New Template. Today, we would like to create a template of our own from scratch, so select Blank Template and Next. You'll be asked to select the main object of the data source for the composed document. Our example today is a business letter to be composed from Salesforce Opportunity. So then I select here Opportunity and Create. You'll be presented with Dynamo Template Builder. First, from the example doc file, let's copy all the text and put them into Dynamo Template Builder. Table should be created inside Dynamo Template Builder. So we take only the text. Let's learn how to work with some basic styling. First, we see that this block of text should be aligned to the right. So how to add this style in the template builder? You can either add the right element style to each lines of text or create a group of text and apply style to it. Create a group, select the group and go to tag, create group. So each Dynamo Online document is an HTML page and styles are to be applied to the elements by clicking on the element on the breadcrumb. So on the breadcrumb, we see group, then go to tag, styles, add, align right. Okay, got it. So we have some margin requirements for the document. Inside the template builder, switch to the margin mode in this icon. And from here, you can change the margin according to your wish. We want the font to be Roboto and the font size is 12. So on the left pane, styles, default, document. In here, you can specify the font, font family, add web font. So Roboto, for example, okay. So now the font is changed and the font size can be modified from here. Okay. So the margin contents like header or footer will share the same default style with the main document. Now let's learn how to create document header. Let's first have a look at our example. So in our example, the header is divided into two columns. How to simulate that into Dynamo Template Builder? First, go to header. And remember to delete this example text. We will now create a table from the editing to bar. Click on the icon table to create a table that has one row and two column and the headers none. All right, so now we copy the text of the first column. The second column is the local images. With images, we can either and the data on the right pane images. Dynamo brings all Salesforce images with public link available for simple drag and drop option. The second way is from the editing toolbar, click on the image icon to create an image placeholder. Then go to tab and upload image straight from the computer. The file has to be smaller than 20 kilobytes to be uploaded. To resize the image and the attributes with, modifying this number will scale up or down the images. To align this image to the right, like in our example, languages practice from the beginning. Click on cell. 
styled at the line right. And lastly, we don't want this table border to be shown. So we click on table, styles, add, borders, none. All right, so the header is complete. Let's map the dynamic content of the document. So all these placeholders, we would like them to dynamically display based on Salesforce fields. First of all, date of creation. Dynamo already has a variable called today that you could use to map in uh, the date of creation. So data, data source, variables, search for today. We have two options, whether to drop it to the document or map to existing element. Because we already have this placeholder to text, so let's map it to the existing element or content. Because this placeholder resides in both paragraph and group element, so we should map it to the smaller level of element, which is a paragraph in this case. Okay, so the similar process for the rest of the placeholders. Uh, it really totally depends on your Salesforce data models, what Salesforce field, what data you would like to be displayed. So usernames is a Salesforce field, and we have these common records available, users, and search for name, full name, map it to existing paragraph, user street, similar process. The next line, we have two separate fields display in the same line. So first, let's go search for post to code, post to code, and we select this placeholder, add to text selection. By this way, we map the content only to this placeholder. City, and we also select this placeholder and add to text selection. Contact name, we would use this primary contact role Contact ID, search for name. Similar process. Next is title. Again, it depends on your Salesforce data model. So company, it should be an account. So account name. Address. Once again, about the contact name, contact name, full name, and because we have also this letter D on the same line, and we would like to map it only to this placeholder, so selection of text and add to text selection. All right, and we have only this one left. Repeat the process with the users and name. All right, so now all the fields are mapped properly. Now let's learn how to create a data table. Let's create a table that looks like in our example, which has four columns and three rows. From the editing toolbar, click on the table icon to create a table that has three rows and four columns and headers first row. First, type in the title text. For the last row, click right, cell, merge right to merge them together. Okay. And to align this quote total to the right, like we just practiced in the beginning, click on cell. Tab, styles, add, line right. All right. From the table, each row should display one opportunity product, which is a relative list of opportunity. Next, let's make table rows repeat data of a related list. 
data, data source, opportunity, and under here we have related list selection. Search for opportunity product. Then assign to row as we want the row to display and repeat. Now search for the needed fields. And drop it to the document. Repeat the process with the rest of the columns. Now let's do the final touch to the table headers and folders. Because we already have this um, style created, it's called table header cell. So in here, you could modify any single detail according to your wish. For example, this color. Copy and paste the color code also work too. With a footer because I can't find any default style set here. So let's add one new style tag add and we have this table footer cell already created. So we add table footer cell and the similar things to modify it. All right, the table is complete. Looks like we are very close to the finish line. Next, let's test to see if uh, everything works properly. Click on test and select your Salesforce record that you wish to be tested with. For example, this one. Okay, looks like everything works properly. We have the date of today. We have dynamic content the name and the information name and the products with product table display properly quantity with the price and the total amount everything works properly except for this field many reasons can cause a field not to appear so if the field looks like a compound field what we could do is that try to map with some more specific fields inside salesforce for example map billing street instead or the other very common reason is that the field is empty in Salesforce. So what we could do is that we could set a condition so that if the field is empty in Salesforce, the placeholder will not appear. So under attributes, if not empty, then copy this content. This is one of our pre-made condition so that if the field is empty in Salesforce, the placeholder will not appear. Okay, so let's test it again. Okay, it now works properly. Finally, remember to save your template with your selected file names and last Salesforce library. Congratulations, you have just got your first template in place. In the next video, we'll learn about basic settings Enable editable content, attachment function for end users, and send custom email after document is generated. If you have any questions about Dynamo and how to work with Dynamo, please contact Dynamo sales team or support team, and we are very willing to help you. See you again soon.